ever thought about how much of the Bible might have been changed? I mean, the real story behind Jesus might not be what we've been hearing all along. It's wild, but some claim the guy on the cross wasn't even Jesus. Shocking, right? The Christian church has had its fair share of scandals, but this one's something else. It's been making headlines more than ever lately. So, I went digging to uncover what's up with these sacred texts and what secrets the Vatican might be hiding. Let's talk about the Gospel of Barnabas. This thing throws shade at everything the church tells us about Jesus. It's like a mystery novel, discovered back in 2000 during a regular police bust on smugglers in Cyprus. Can you imagine? They find this ancient manuscript among the loot. Legal battles over this artifact dragged on for more than a decade, and finally, in 2012, it landed in the Ankara Ethnography Museum in Turkey for experts to dissect. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video, so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell, so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. Now, here's the twist, this gospel was supposedly written by Apostle Barnabas. But hold on a sec, the Bible lists 12 disciples, but no Barnabas among them. This dude claims there were actually 70 disciples, and he was their main leader. Plus, he wasn't a fan of another apostle, Paul. You know, the guy whose letters are a big deal in the New Testament? Barnabas paints him as a bit of a loony. Barnabas challenges some core Christian beliefs. 2. The concept of the Trinity? Nowhere to be found in the Bible. It was cooked up later by a council. And get this, Barnabas says Jesus was just a regular guy with a divine connection, not the Son of God. He even predicts the arrival of another Messiah 500 years after Jesus. That's got some folks thinking it's a nod to Muhammad's birth. He's got a whole different take on paradise, too. Nine levels. It's like a heavenly apartment complex. But guess what? Not all floors are equal. If you're not on the top tier, it's just like life on Earth, apparently. But the real bombshell drops in the final chapters. According to Barnabas, during the Last Supper, Jesus knew Judas would betray him. But here's the kicker, Jesus didn't get caught. Angels swooped in, swapped Judas for Jesus, and poor Judas ended up on the cross instead. The crucified guy? Not Jesus. Barnabas claims Jesus spilled the truth to him, and honestly, it sounds a bit like a personal vendetta against Paul. He's hell-bent on discrediting Paul's writings. Now, why should we care about this text? Well, the Vatican's oddly supportive of it. They rush to push it to the museum without much scrutiny. Makes you wonder why they do that, right? Maybe they're scared this could shake up the whole foundation of Christianity. There's this ancient story about Helena, trying to tear down a church at the spot of Jesus' crucifixion, finding three crosses. Christians went crazy, claiming these as holy relics. It's become this untouchable tale that no one questions. So, what's the deal here? Are we being fed a modified version of history? The Gospel of Barnabas sure raises a ton of questions about what we think we know. Think about it, throughout history, the Vatican's been pulling some sneaky moves, snipping bits out of the Bible like it's a dress they're tailoring for themselves. This isn't just a theory, it's legit. In 1684, they axed 14 sacred books out of the original 80. And that's just one of the Bible edits. 
Back in the early church days, anything they didn't like was dubbed apocrypha, a Greek word that literally means hidden. What were they hiding, huh? One of these hidden gems is the Gospel of Thomas. Found buried near Egypt in 1945, it's got some spicy details. Thomas portrays Jesus as a hot-tempered, self-centered guy who called himself God since he was a toddler. The typical church-approved Gospels? They skip over Jesus' childhood. Maybe they didn't want these out-of-the-box stories messing with their image of him. Thomas doesn't dive into Jesus' life story either. Instead, it focuses on his teachings, aiming to decode their real meaning. According to Thomas, it's not about your good deeds, but your skill at unraveling these messages that gets you into heaven. And guess what? Most believers won't make the cut, according to Thomas. Now, here's where it gets wild. Out of 114 sayings attributed to Jesus in this gospel, 40 are nowhere else to be found. And half of these are pretty controversial, especially about women. Jesus supposedly says he'll make Mary Magdalene a dude so she can enter heaven. Yeah, that's a bit out there, right? And get this, he claims only circumcised men can decode these veiled messages and score a spot in paradise. Sounds pretty exclusive to me. But it doesn't stop there. Thomas boldly declares himself Jesus' twin brother from another mother. No wonder the Vatican yanked this gospel out of the Bible. But why was it in there in the first place? Did some of Thomas's truths slip past the church's radar before suddenly becoming a problem? Throughout history, folks have been demanding entire books be chucked out of the Bible. And when you think about it, how can we trust the ones shaping our beliefs when, at one point, they couldn't even spot that a pope was actually a woman? Yeah, that happened. In 858, during a Vatican procession, Pope John VII, after ruling for two years, went into labor. Surprise, it was Pope Joan. Born in Germany, she disguised herself as a dude to get an education. Things got complicated when she fell for an official, had a baby, and got stoned to death when people found out. The church swears this was all fiction. But hey, history's full of surprises, right? You know, we put a lot of trust in the Vatican's choices about what's in the Bible, but let's peek behind the curtain. Turns out, they pulled some books out without much of a solid reason. Like, how confident can we be that those books were really misleading? Now, here's the deal with Apocrypha, these texts sometimes clash not just with Christianity's beliefs, but also with common sense. Check this out, Barnabas, in his Gospel, claims Pontius Pilate was already a big shot in Judea when Jesus was born. History tells us Pilate took over when Jesus was 26. And the geographic bits in that text? Way off. He talks about Jesus reaching Nazareth near the Sea of Galilee, but that place is a good 25 kilometers away. That's a solid five hours of brisk walking. Then there's this mix-up about Tyre being near the Jordan River when, in reality, it's over 48 kilometers apart. And don't even get me started on Nineveh, supposedly near the Mediterranean Sea, when it's actually 645 kilometers east in Iraq. Did Barnabas have a time machine or something? And that's not all the gospel talks about wine stored in wooden barrels, but back then, they used large jars. But wait, it gets weirder. Barnabas uses phrases coined by Dante Alighieri, a 14th century poet. That's like predicting the future or, more likely, it's a sign this gospel isn't from when we thought it was. Most experts believe it's not 1,500 years old, 
it was probably written around 1500. Now, let's talk about the Gospel of Thomas. This one's a bit shady too. It's not big on Jesus' bio, and theologians went to town trying to discredit it. They formed a whole club just to nitpick this text. Some big names trashed it, calling it fake, heretical, or just plain absurd. Seems like a PR campaign against it, right? When Christianity was just starting out, most folks were still into pagan stuff. So, maybe Thomas tried making his stories familiar, like calling himself Jesus' twin from another mom. Kind of like an ancient Greek myth about demigods. Jesus might seem unlikable in this gospel because back then, Christian kindness was alien to most people. Some say the Vatican might have twisted the Christian teachings in Thomas's gospel themselves. And once Christianity boomed, they ditched it. But here's the kicker, even the official Bible has tons of contradictions. It's like a house of cards. Let's dive into some Bible bloopers. You know that famous story about God creating humans, right? Well, it's a bit like watching a movie with a plot twist followed by a flip-flop. One part says God made both man and woman at the same time, but then it switches gears, telling us Adam came first, and later, Eve popped out of his rib. Talk about mixed signals. And it's not just one-off mistakes. Take David and Goliath, for example. First, David slain the giant without a sword, but in the very next sentence, he's taking Goliath's sword to chop his head off. Talk about a storytelling mix-up. Now, let's chat about Jesus' last words. You'd think those would be crystal clear, right? But nope. Different gospel writers have their own take. Matthew claims Jesus cried out to God, feeling abandoned. Luke says Jesus entrusted his spirit to God, and then there's John, who says Jesus simply said, it's finished. It's like they all read different scripts. But wait, it gets funnier. The Bible can't even get the numbers straight. John's Gospel talks about Nicodemus bringing 100 lit ras of myrrh and aloes, which would weigh about 35 kilograms in today's units. That's enough incense to send a whole town. Unless Nicodemus wanted Jesus to smell like a spa day, this just doesn't add up. Now, here's the juicy stuff. The Vatican's got this top-secret apostolic archive locked up tighter than a vault. We're talking 85 kilometers of shelves stacked with 35,000 volumes. They guard it like Fort Knox. Reporters, politicians, and even students aren't allowed anywhere near it. Only scholars over 75 can apply, and even then, they're vetted like VIPs at an exclusive club. But getting in doesn't mean smooth sailing. They've got Swiss guards at the gate, and if one of them isn't feeling it, sorry, you're out. Who doesn't love a good mystery, especially when it's about books, right? We're diving into this ancient book that's a total game changer. It throws everything we know about human origins into question. Plus, we've got a lineup of some other super mysterious reads. First up, Number 15, The Book of Enoch. You might recognize the name Enoch from the Bible, but did you know there's a whole book by him? Yup, same dude who's chilling at the start of one of the most popular books ever. Thing is, not everyone's sold on this book. Many Christians don't see it as legit, except for this Ethiopian Orthodox section. But it gets even wilder. Enoch. That's Noah's great-grandpa, right? He's the supposed author of this book, and it's got two parts, one called the Ethiopian Book of Enoch and the other, the Slavonic Book of Enoch. Experts think it was written in G's, 
with bits in Aramaic from the Dead Sea Scrolls, and some in Greek and Latin. Confusing? Yeah, a bit. But here's the real head-scratcher, how did this book survive Noah's Great Flood if Enoch wrote it? Enoch's story is a roller coaster. His dad, Jared, had him when he was 162, living another 800 years. But Enoch? He had Methuselah when he was just 65 and clocked out at a young 365 years old. I mean, that's like a blink compared to his pals living almost a thousand years. Talk about feeling shortchanged. This guy apparently pleased God so much, he got a VIP ticket to heaven without even dying. Legend has it, he hung out with the big man upstairs, saw angels fall from grace, and watched evil giants wreak havoc on earth. Must have been some sight from up there. But wait, it gets even crazier, he got appointed as the scribe to jot down everything, like some celestial reporter. Angels, planets, stars, you name it. He even spotted angels getting into some shady stuff, hooking up with humans and making evil giant babies. Number 14, The Red Book by Carl Jung. Now, here's the scoop, Carl Jung, the legendary psychologist, wrote this book in the last century. But here's what makes it a total enigma. It was kept under wraps for decades even after Jung checked out. Why the hush-hush? Jung was a character, mentored by Freud, then broke off to do his own thing. He had this theory about our inner minds and spirituality called Jungian psychology. It's all about our collective unconscious, myths, and symbols, kind of mind-blowing stuff. So, Jung, in his late 30s, decides to write this wild mix of a journal and a mythological novel. Think of it as his deep dive into his own mind and dreams. But guess what? He didn't want it out there messing with his reputation as a psychologist, so it stayed hidden for ages. Alright, we're diving into some epic mysterious books, starting with one that's a real hidden gem. The Book of C.G. Young, stored away in a Swiss safe deposit box. Then we've got the lowdown on number 13, the Rohan Codex. This book? It's a real brain bender. Picture this, a 448-page mystery packed with illustrations but no known author, date, language, or even a title. It's named after this old Hungarian city, Rohan, which is now called Rechnitz in Austria. Kinda wild, right? The pages are packed with symbols, like 800 different ones, way more than any alphabet. Experts think it might not be an alphabet at all, maybe some kind of syllabary or something graphic, like those Chinese characters. Plus, it's got 90 pages of illustrations, religious, military scenes, you name it. It's a mixed bag, with symbols of different religions coexisting. But here's the kicker, no one has a clue what it's all about. Some reckon it's a big prank, while others think it's the real deal. Next up, at number 12, is the Codex Gigas, also known as the Devil's Bible. This one's got a wild backstory. Picture this, during the Thirty Years' War in the 17th century, the Swedish army swipes this massive book from Prague. This thing is huge, 36 inches tall, 20 inches wide, and a whopping 165 pounds. It's the kind of book you definitely skip carrying in your backpack. But the real kicker? Legend says the author made a deal with the devil to finish this mammoth book in just one day, a task that should have taken 20 years. And yep, the last 10 pages? They're missing, cut out at some point. Spooky, right? Now, at number 11, we've got the Voynich Manuscript. 
Discovered in 1912 by Wilfred Voynich, this 250-page mystery is a real puzzler. It's written in this totally bizarre language or code that no one's cracked. Think astrology, herbs, maps, and even weird animal illustrations, but all in a language nobody understands. Scholars, scientists, they've all taken a swing at it, but no dice. Some reckon it's from the 15th or 16th century, but the real kicker? Nobody knows where it's from or what it means. Maybe it's just an ancient prank? Finally, let's talk about number 10, The Book of Soy Girl. It's a 16th century spellbook filled with magic, astrology, and demonology. John D., this ancient scholar, got his hands on it, and boy, did it give him a headache. It's mostly in regular Latin, but then bam. It hits you with these crazy magical paragraphs, conjurations, protection spells, all sorts of angel and demon hierarchy stuff. D spent his whole life trying to crack its secrets but couldn't make heads or tails of the last 36 pages. After his death, the book was lost for ages until it popped up in the British Library and Bodleian Library in 1994. Phew, these books are total head scratchers, right? Alright, let's unlock the secrets of some mind-boggling books. Up first, the Book of Soya. This thing's still shrouded in mystery, no one knows who wrote it, why, or what those 36 tables and their magical stuff mean. At number 9, we've got the Codex Seraphinianus. Ever seen that meme with folks turning into a crocodile while being intimate? Yeah, this book inspired it. It's got weirdness galore, fish eyes from a strange creature, a dude riding his own coffin, totally bizarre stuff. The kicker? The text's like a guide to an alien world, unreadable, and full of illustrations. And get this, it was published in the 80s, not some ancient relic. But hey, it proves humans shouldn't have too much time on their hands. Next. The Purple Vu. It's also known as the Book of the People, diving deep into ancient Mayan culture and mythology. Written in the Mayan language kitsch, it's a deep dive into creation, life, and even hero twins turning into the sun and moon. It all starts with just sky and sea before Earth's creators went to town. Discovered by a priest in Guatemala, it's now sitting pretty in the Newberry Library in Chicago. At number 7, we've got the Urantia book, a mix of philosophy, science, and spirituality. This book's a real debate starter among scholars. Published in 1955, it talks about life on Earth until Jesus' death, with nods to angels, the Trinity, and the universe's age which doesn't quite match modern science. Then there's the Kybalion. Sounds like something straight out of a fantasy novel, right? But nope, it's a real deal, a 1908 publication by the Yogi Publication Society. It delves into the Hermetic Doctrine's seven ancient principles, secrets passed down from ages. Hermes Trismegistus, an ancient sage, supposedly learned this wisdom from Egyptian gods. The book spills the beans on mentalism, human experience, and even influencing and changing the mind as you wish. And now, number 5, The Ripley Scroll. Wanna turn rocks into gold? Well, this alchemist's handbook from 1624 might be your ticket. There's only one copy in private hands, and it's your guide to making the Philosopher's Stone. The scroll kicks off with the drawing of the alchemist, the mastermind holding the Philosopher's Egg, a glass flask for all your experiments. These books? They're like stepping into a whole new world. Check this out, there's this wicked inscription on a thingamajig that goes, 
You must mix water and earth, earth and air, air and fire, fire and earth. Oh, and it's got the moon hanging out with the red stone, the white stone, the elixir of life, now that's one fancy moon. And get this, it's balanced on a snake, like a dragon biting its own tail, spilling blood onto a globe below. Painted by this dude named Leonard Smith Lay from Manchester, this scroll has been called everything from wild and colorful to downright wacky. Now, let's talk about the Sarajevo Agata, a book with Jewish roots. It's part of a yearly Jewish tradition where families take turns reading from these holy instructional texts during Passover. This one's special, it's made of these super thin calfskin leaves, like 142 of them. Packed with cool stuff, like 69 vivid pictures showing off biblical events, from the start of everything to Moses leading folks out of Egypt. Plus, it's got some killer poetry by top Jewish poets from the Middle Ages. You can catch this gem at the National Museum in Sarajevo. But it's had a crazy life, escaped Nazi destruction in World War II, dodged damage in the Yugoslavian Civil War, and even ended up in a bank vault after some crooks tossed it around. And then there's this incredible book that popped up from a 300-year-old shipwreck. Imagine most of us can't even find our old school books, but this thing survived the waters for three centuries. The conservators found 16 tiny bits, thought they were cloth at first, real delicate stuff. As they worked on preserving these bits, they found just seven had legible text. One word, ELO, hinted at a connection to a Spanish settlement on the coast of Peru. And hey, it even had tales about a sailor named Edward Cook. Wild, right? Let's dive into the second spot on our list, Nostradamus and his epic prophecies. Picture this, you're fretting about the future, and along comes Nostradamus, this French dude from way back in the 16th century, claiming he could tell what's coming. He wrote this killer book called Lay Prophecies jam-packed with predictions that folks reckon point straight into the future even today. It's been a hit since 1555, and even after Nostradamus checked out, his prophecies about Hitler, Napoleon, the French Revolution, the Great Fire of London, 9-11, JFK's assassination, and tons more disasters have people scratching their heads. But hey, these predictions aren't just plain old words, they're all written in these snazzy four-lined rhymes, making it a fun puzzle to solve. But guess what? Not everyone's buying into Nostradamus's crystal ball skills, some scholars say it's all misinterpretations or just lucky guesses. It's a mystery that keeps us hooked. And for the grand finale, the number one spot, the 1,500-year-old Bible. Now, you've heard about the Bible, but hold on tight, cause we're talking about a way older version dug up in Turkey. This Bible is quite the rebel, it was penned by Saint Barnabas and didn't quite make it into the Bible we're all familiar with. Valued at a whopping $28 million, this ancient treasure flips the script on Jesus' story. It suggests Jesus didn't kick the bucket, it was Judas who bit the dust while Jesus flew up to heaven alive. And get this, it doesn't give Jesus the whole Son of God title, he's just seen as a top-tier prophet spreading the divine word. Oh, and it throws shade at Apostle Paul, calling him an imposter. Saint Barnabas, who was tight with Apostle Paul in the regular Bible, spins a whole new yarn about Jesus. Some say he might have been pushed to write a different story, shady stuff, right? This Bible shines a light on Christianity but skips over other religions like Islam. Which of these mind-bending books intrigues you the most? Share your thoughts down below. Imagine, even if you're in, you're only allowed to request three articles at a time. 
Need more? Back to square one. Now, what's the church hiding behind all this security? Must be something big if they're locking it down that tight. But, hey, some leaked theories hint at what's behind those closed doors. So, there's this buzz about the Vatican locking up their archive, right? Apparently, it's all about dodging a divine curse. Back in 1939, they found some ancient bones under St. Peter's Basilica. At first, they thought it was just a worker trapped in there, but it turned out these bones were super old, possibly St. Peter's. Legend has it that disturbing those remains means your skin's peeling off till you kick the bucket. Creepy, right? Makes you wonder if there are more of these ominous warnings about the Vatican's treasures. Could it be that the Vatican's playing it safe, guarding these secrets to protect us from some holy wrath? Or maybe it's the opposite, maybe they don't want us figuring out that there's no cosmic payback for snooping around. Rumor has it, buried in that secret stash, there are letters between St. Peter and Emperor Nero. No one's gotten the green light to read them all, but the pieces they've peeked at? They claim Jesus might have been just a made-up story. It's a bold statement, but historians admit there's not much outside the Bible to back Jesus' historical existence. Look, whether you buy into the Bible or not, the Vatican's been pulling some shady moves, messing with our trust. In this secret archive? It's like a treasure trove of mysteries. Back in the late 20th century, there was this contraption called the Chronovisor. This Italian monk said it could peek into the past and future. Wild, right? The Vatican swooped in and swiped that thing faster than you can say time travel. Makes you think, did they snatch it to keep us from knowing the real deal about Jesus or maybe to hide some secrets St. Peter and Nero were hinting at in their letters? Who knows? Maybe there's a conspiracy brewing in those Vatican vaults, run by some Illuminati. So, would you dare to peek behind the curtains of the Christian church if it meant everything you thought about the Bible might just crumble? Food for thought. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.